Well, welcome to a new Harry's Garage video and today's car is the Ferrari Roma. Now, regular um, viewers of this channel will say, hang on a minute, haven't you done this car? This very car was in the garage about eight months ago. Yes, I, I did, but it was a very peculiar test that one because I wasn't allowed to drive this car at that moment. I had to uh, go down to Goodwood and drive a car there on circuit and on roads and the weather was horrible it was middle of the winter it was about minus one it chucked it with rain when i was down at goodwood and all in all i didn't really get to know the car that well in my view so i said to ferrari some months ago when you got a uh, spare uh, time with the roma could i have it back and i would really like to enjoy it and do a trip with it and that's what this is going to be so what we're going to do with the roma is Go on a, a weekend away, we're going to stay at a hotel down in Cornwall, St Moors. It's about 250 miles from here and do a proper tour. So it just strikes me that's what the Ferrari Roma is all about. That's, what it, that's the sort of car that I want to go weekend away, that sort of trip. And I wanted to do it in September, hoping the weather was going to be better. Unfortunately, outside it is blowing a hoolie. We've had about 30 mil of rain and we're in the middle of a, a shortage of fuel as well. So people are queuing up for fuel. So I don't know, <laughs> it's the law of sod has kicked in. But let's see how we get on down to the house, pack the car, set off for Cornwall. outside Burford at the moment and um, yeah I'm intrigued how much fuel this is going to do on a tank suddenly we want to turn it into an economy run not something you normally do in a Ferrari but when everywhere is run out of fuel you're you I'm looking at that range and it in a tank is full and it says 222 miles um, it arrived and it had 203 miles on it I've only done short journey so far but uh, yeah, that's a bit of a worry when we've got how far to destination? 236 miles to destination, four hours it's going to take us to get down there. Fantastic weather, not 13 degrees, rain, wipers on. Uh, but I just thought I'd have a look at this because this is our uh, where I do test the noise of all the cars I have in just to see how noisy this car is. And actually, there we are, 60 miles an hour. And it's 78, so it's it's a it's at the noisy end of the scale, but it's not silly noisy. When it gets over 80, that's silly noisy. But we're at yeah 78, still pretty loud. So same as a 911, uh, 992, 911, or something like that. Anyway, we will carry on. If you look outside, just sort of see what the weather we've got here. Uh, not nice, really. Not really Ferrari weather. We're not really going to be exercising 620 horsepower as we go down the M5 down to Cornwall. Well, we're off the motorway now, as you can see. We're actually heading up to Dartmoor, up on the top. You can see the moor up ahead. Weather hasn't improved, I have to say, but. Um, yeah, it was nice getting off the motorway and uh, I know I have seen them obsessed with my mileage but now the range is 138 miles so it soon plummeted as soon as we went on to some of these sort of roads. So I just had it on comfort round here, it's not really sport weather. I put it on to sport, yeah it just sharpens up the throttle a bit. We have sheep to contend with now as well but um, I have to say even though we've only done motorway in this first journey I am liking this car more than I did down at Goodwood. Oh look at those guys. They 
you go. That's not an everyday sight around Burford Way. He's not. He's just coming across, isn't he? Is he coming across? Yeah, I'm just coming across, mate. I know he is. I know you've got a Ferrari. You think you own the road, don't you? Yeah, fully waterproof. That was nice. Is that another one? There we are, hiding in the bushes. Yeah, well camouflaged. Yeah, different part of the world down here. Unfortunately, we now have a 40 mile an hour zone to deal with all the way across here. But with this amount of livestock around, it's not really surprising. What it's like here in the winter. We've got horses now, we've got wild horses. Like driving through a zoo. getting any better. It's just a nice fog light on. We're right on top of the moor, dropping down into Tavistock at the moment. You can still catch a bus. We have arrived in St Moors and I think we're staying, the hotel is just down there. This isn't summer weather at all. Look at it out there. It's pretty wild. So we have done uh, as predicted, 237 miles to get here. So it's funny, isn't it, how bang on it was, even though we went across uh, Dartmouth. There is our hotel, Idle Rocks. That's where we're staying. We made it! Yay! Time, help Who's that talking? What's Yelp for help. Yelp for help. Paw yeah, it's Paw Patrol doing the uh, navigation for us. Now, where do we park? It's all very tight. There we are. We have arrived. Well, we're parking up in the little hotel car park here, just so you know where we are. We're on this very tip down here, Falmouth, down there, Truro. So that's where we've come all the way. So right to the end, Land's End is there, so not far from Land's End. In, in the Ferrari, um, in the Roma. Five hours trip, I think, with that little diversion we did across Dartmoor. We hope to see it in better um, sort of weather than we got today. It's still mist and blowing in over the seas. A gale, lots of white horses outside. I have learned quite a lot more about the Roma. It's funny, you just live with a car, you just get a different opinion of it. And uh, that was a very good car for this trip, surprisingly so. Still got that gruffness um, at tick over, and, but it's better, this gearbox, new gearbox for Ferrari, this eight speed gearbox, is a big step up from the seven speed at slow speed. Speed of change, all the rest of it is the same. And the other thing is just the amount of torque in those lower gears. Um, there's more power. I haven't tapped the power at all. I quite like the way the readout. At some point someone has done 119 miles an hour in this car and it keeps logging me as a speed when I do a journey. I haven't done 119 miles an hour down here. I should be lucky if I've even touched 80 I would imagine. But anyway, we're staying here for a couple of days. We might do a bit more sightseeing. We'll see what the weather is tomorrow and then we'll just see yeah, how this car performs mooching around Cornwall before we end up going 230 miles home. So anyway, we'll see you in the morning. Just up the road from St Moors, 
just thought with a name like that we had to come and visit it. It's a chain driven ferry that just goes across this estuary. Lovely day today, completely different to yesterday. The rain has gone, blue skies arrived. Glorious morning just at the breakfast table, just looking across the estuary, across to Falmer from the hotel. Really nice. Party boat, oh dear, what's going on? It's quite early for a party. It's, well, it's 12 o'clock. Um, other th yeah, we went just into St Moore's just to see if there was a petrol station. Um, we found one, but um, I think it's a long time since it's had petrol, unfortunately. It's all right, we've got three quarts of a tank or something. But yeah, my only worry with ferries and these sort of cars is just the approach angle and whether you're actually going to get it on. I haven't actually grounded out. If you look at the nose of the Roma, I haven't got nose lift on it. But um, yeah, that's relatively low. But we'll find out if we can use a ferry or not in a moment. So the plan of action today, we're just having a, yeah, a holiday. We're just mooching about Cornwall. Might well go and visit Land's End. I don't know why, but it's sort of, I haven't been there for years. Uh, but my dear wife has never been to Land's End. I know it's just a sign, but it's just something you do down here. There's lots of other things to see as well. But yeah, first job is to get the ferry to the other side and just hope the Roma fits. on the ferry as you can tell we're not allowed to get out but you can hear the sort of chains as it sort of makes its way across just pulls itself on these chains on these wheels quite fun stats on this ferry uh, King Harry ferry saves 5 million car miles a year 1.7 million kilos of co2 and 750,000 litres of fuel so I'm doing my bit for the environment by taking the Ferrari across the ferry King Harry Ferry. What we're actually going to do, we're in St Moore's down there and we've just come out of St Moore's and that this ferry just takes you across the estuary there, just across to here. We're going to go to St Ives. Um, I want to go to Tate Gallery in St Ives. Then we're going to go down to Land's End because I'm a tourist and I haven't been there for ages. We did an Evo story there. Then we're going to come back along this uh, road uh, St Michael's Mount is there, Port Avon is very pretty and then take the ferry back, back to St Moore's. So yeah, just a tourist day in the Roma today. Just, this is a really important bit to experience with this car. Can it do this sort of stuff? Or was it only good on those twisting roads, full power, etc.? So far, it's doing a very good job at going slowly and going around this beautiful corner of the UK. There you go, always a dodgy bit. So if you go across like this, very rarely do you hit. I learnt that one with the Zonda you get over ramps. Right, go see what this side of Cornwall's like. Everything is tight down here. This is the key for the ferry. We found some of the tightest roads I've ever seen in St Moore's. What I love is it's so small this road that we found it and it's got a 30 limit sign on it which is a bit mad and it's got double yellow lines either side there's no way you'd even get a car down it let alone park a car there anyway let's make the most of this lovely weather and crack on Like there's going to be some surfing action out there if you look at the waves it's uh, <clears throat> a good day for it directly on shore our NLI are out there so they must be expecting a few issues I don't know yeah, spectacular beach though and yeah St Ives Tate St Ives is just here 
just working out where we might be able to stop. Well, this is Land's End, literally just here. If you swing round, that's um, sort of complex. There's a sort of shop, usual sort of souvenir places you would imagine from uh, Land's End. There's quite a sort of part. There's some coastal walks around here that's dedicated here. So there's nothing between here and America several thousand miles away in that direction so all the weather everything <laughs> comes across the sea and you get it here so the yeah if you haven't come down here you can see the waves crashing against the sea down there absolutely no boats out there at all that I can see I was one fishing boat down there there's the <laughs> Land's End lighthouse out there on those rocks down there but yeah pretty wild part of the world down here Right, better get on back to the hotel. The trip is, I've just filled up with fuel and I am fascinated, sorry about this, but I am fascinated with how little fuel this Ferrari is using. So vehicle, distance traveled, 315 miles, liters used, 70.58, so if I divide that by 4.54 equals 15.5 gallons, right, so 315 divided by 15.5 equals. <laughs> it's done a really good 20 miles to the gallon, this car. Fantastic, eh? Yeah, no, it's, it must have a very big tank. Yeah, it's saying the range is 389 miles. At the roundabout, take the second exit. Go, go, go! Yeah, if you have a look in front, I can't go, go, go. I'm really sorry. Call control. After 1,000 feet, take the ferry. Take the ferry across the S3. Can you get on? Take the ferry. I'll take the ferry, it's a good idea that. Top tip. Peace. It's a pretty ferry, I have to say. It's top ten in the world apparently. There's an old boy's been looking out there forever. He hardly moves, it's funny. Just likes that spot, it's a good view from there. People are sat now, Ferrari sat now, knows we're on a ferry, there it is, we're on a ferry. Very clever. I have to say this actually works, it's sort of easy to power, so you've got recents on the Land's End, I'll go to Land's End, there we go. Route calculation. Don't know, and you can do, if I go to alternatives, It'll come out of alternatives, and it'll come, come on. There's fast, short, and fun. 
don't know why what fun is but uh, yeah it's just I've never seen any other car with a fun uh, option I've known you know fast or short or but fun no that's a new one on me so I'm going to choose fun and I go back to there and you go start and do I want to change yeah I want to change I don't know. Yeah, I'm very, I'm quite impressed actually how easy it is to power. Having been rude about this in my first test, I don't know. It's all to hand, and I've also noticed I can turn the volume up behind the wheel because that was driving me around the twist trying to do it on this slider. But actually, you've got a little wheel on the back of the wheel there. Nobody knows about it, and that's how you do it. And if you want to mute, you just do that. Things you learn about a car when you live with a car. This is also a bit pointless. This is this display in front of the passenger. And you know, the passenger knows my tyres aren't warmed up, so I need to get more heat into the tyres before I can drive even faster. But uh, there we go. Useful information. I don't know any other cars that have temperature of tyres like that and tell you to put more heat into the tyres so you can go faster. Well, morning. Um, we're no longer in Cornwall. I'm back home because um, yeah, we came, woke up yesterday at the hotel, opened the curtains, and it was torrential rain outside. It was actually right across the UK yesterday. It was a complete washout, and there was no way we could do any filming because <laughs> the camera equipment just wouldn't like it. You can't do anything. So yeah, we we set off. We loaded up. You have to be quick with the boot, a top tip if you buy a Roma you, to stop you flooding the luggage. Be very quick when you open the boot, otherwise it will drip all over your luggage, all the water on the um, boot lid. And we came home 237 miles, whatever it was, on the motorway. Yeah, everyone was, you know, it was okay really, but my goodness, it was wet. The uh, wipers were generally in second gear for most of the way, so that tells you how wet it was. And. Uh, yeah, it's been a really good experience to have the car at Roma for you know seven days and just over 600 miles, I think it is now. So what I'm going to do now is summarise all that I've learnt about living with a Roma over that sort of distance. And I think just kicking off, number one, it's a very usable car. We're fortunate enough to have done several long, big journeys in sort of the latest Ferraris. And this one comes up top. Uh, seats are excellent, full of adjustment. Unlike the six, uh, 812 Superfast, the passenger seat has a height adjustment on it because it had not got the Daytona seat, sports seats option. So that's good. And all the controls, weirdly, haven't been rude about it. Uh, they all, I've got used to it. The only thing I say about the haptic controls on the steering wheel was they are distracting. You do still look down and you have to look at the menu. And there is a number of menus that just take a little too long. And the great thing about Ferrari Montezemolo's day, he says, we take the technology from F1 and bring it to the road cars. Well, I can't see haptic controls going anywhere near an F1 car anytime soon. There's no way a race driver will be able to control it. So why is it on their road cars? But there you go, it looks very clean, very nice, um, but it is a bit distracting take the stop start off it, it is all sort of in normal mode all clear let's have a look what happens it's just no traction whatsoever yeah traction yeah we're going to come on to that in a moment the other thing i've learned about living with it for a while it's a fabulous looking car it is a drop dead gorgeous ferrari and the shape, its sensor shape, the rounded shape, that sharp nose, it looks modern. And the pride of ownership comes from just the first sight of the car. It hasn't really got a bad angle on it. Interior works very well as well. Whoever specced a light coloured dash needs shooting because there's full of reflections in this particular press car, but no one's gonna do that in real life. You always have a dark dash, otherwise you can't see out the windscreen. Next, the performance. It is properly, savagely fast, brutal. 
And it's a bit odd that one because it's got this suave exterior, Dolce Vita. They, you know, they did a promo um, video when this car was launched, and a, lovely, a beautiful lady driving it for a room, and someone else has got one. And yet it's this ferocious car once you light the turbos up, and it's this two modes. I've spent rather too much time going slowly in this car due to going down to Cornwall and being in the lanes and stuff. And one of its failings for me is it, it is a bit rough and uncouth at the lower revs. It, it all starts up in auto, I had it in car, got it in comfort now, and it uses a lot of the low revs. And there's plenty of push because of that turbocharged dump of torque. But it just sounds gruff. It's slightly embarrassing at tick over if you're waiting like in St Moors and there's people around. It doesn't sound what you what you want your Ferrari to sound like at lower revs. All changed above 4,000 and then it starts to sing inside the cabin anyway and it makes the right sounds. But it is gruff at the lower revs. But boy, has it got some performance. I think it's um, 200 clicks, they say, in nine seconds crazy fast, must be 6 seconds to 100 miles an hour. Doesn't have some downsides I'm just going to take it through here. Because I do like the chassis and the Manatino, there's nothing better than the Manatino choosing between both, beautifully judged. See there, that turbo was just about to overload the rear tire, sharp steering so fast, pointy, just ace. And it also feels light. I know, you know, 15, 70 kilos, I think it is, isn't that light, but it feels light behind the wheel when it's about 150 kilos lighter than an 812 Superfast or something like that. And, you know, Aston's, etc., it's lighter than all of those. everyday driving as I say go on your best bit of road quiet road go through the gears fantastic sound so you know this I, I'm gonna be a bit cruel on this car because I wanted to love it so much but it's not a, what I would term a five-star car for me gorgeous looking but there is something hasn't that engine hasn't got the charisma of past Ferraris that's the bit I'm missing with this car. It's funny, it's a strange mix. I, I was thinking about it last night and it's as if Verlaine Pierre, imagine if he had bought TVR instead of Nikolai Semensky. And within the VW group, they had created an ultimate TVR. It would be beautiful, it would have fast steering, and have a crazy amount of performance. And that's sort of what this, this car feels like. It's everything you wanted a TVR to be, but utterly beautiful, beautifully built, manufactured, and with crazy usable performance. But it's a Ferrari. And from Ferrari, I expect charisma by the bucketful from their engines. Right, going into these bends here, into third gear, come around here. Into second, into here. Can I use the power around here? Yes, I can. Here we go. Oh, it is crazy amount of performance. But it actually overloads the rear tyres a bit too often. I had it in wet, I joined a dual carriageway and it nearly spat me, it cooked up. I noticed Dickie Meaden had mentioned this in the Evo re recent Evo group test. It's sort of the diff has can't quite cope with the torque. And I looked at the torque, 560 pound foot of torque, 760 newton meters. That is more than an 812 Superfast puts out. It's more than my Zonda put out. It is a colossal amount of torque to put through the rear wheels. It's the same as the F8. They turn the boost down so you don't get the horse peak horsepower. This 620 horsepower is going some anyway, but they're over 700 horsepower in the F8. But because the engine's moved to the front, you've got a bit more of a traction issue at the rear because you're not mid-engine, you haven't got that weight transfer. 
and the torque overloads it. With this new gearbox, they can deliver more torque to the rear, and you're managing that torque all the time. It dominates everything, and uh, it, it just gives it this wild side, and every now and then, it, it can't cope. But apart from that, the slight like of charisma. I just imagine if Field and Pier had put a uh, TVR within the portfolio, just imagine this car with that Hurricane V10 in it. That would be glorious. I wish Ferrari had taken the turbos off and put a super high revving V8 in it. See, part of the trouble with Ferrari at the moment, they're just making their cars too fast. They don't need to be this quick. But then it's Ferrari and I suppose they feel they have to do it. But I think we've reached a point where we want to celebrate the cars rather than just trying to make them faster and faster. This feels like the GSR Pista Turbo Nutter version, yet it's the first Roma of the range. It's just crazy. But there you go, that's just me probably. But as a car, I love it a whole lot more than I did that other test in it. Really enjoyed my time in it. I actually, I think I would have a convertible. If they ever did a convertible, I would love that. And I, it's so close with that Portofino M I had in the other day, but I really enjoyed that one that had the opening roof. I think it's got better traction. It's a bit heavier and the roof opens, but I quite like this modern tech. So I'm torn between those two, both terrific cars, a celebration of what Ferrari means and the key thing it's such a nice looking car so there you go that's my conclusion on the Ferrari Roma after 600 miles with it hope you enjoyed this video all sorts of elements in this one if you have well keep watching keep subscribing more videos coming along very soon